Hello viewers and welcome back to a new video. Last week we didn't publish a video because I had to take care of a few things including something for the start of the new academic year, which I'm looking forward to immensely. This week we are going to talk about the effect of foods high in salt on your cat's health. Or can a low salt diet be a problem too? So what is salt? Salt is a mineral composed primarily of sodium chloride. But watch out! When we use the term salt in everyday language, we are talking about a salt that consists of sodium and chloride, also called table salt. The term salts is also a collective term for a group of chemical substances. There are also other salts such as calcium chloride, sodium bisulfate and copper sulfate. These substances are also salts but not the ones you want to use in your kitchen. These salts are used in the industry, such as for metal finishing, cleaning agents and herbicides. So when we talk about salt in this video, we are talking about sodium chloride or the widely known table salt. Ok, so now we know that table salt is made out of sodium and chloride. The components of salt that has the most influence on an organism is sodium. That's why the scientific articles on this subject talk about the impact of sodium intake on the health of the domestic cat. The question of whether the sodium content in food affects the health of the cat arises from the impact of sodium on humans. The human body requires a small amount of sodium to conduct nerve impulses, contract and relax muscles and maintain the proper balance of water and minerals. It is estimated that we need about 500 mg of sodium daily for these vital functions to happen. That is only 0.5 grams, which is not a lot. It is recommended by the US dietary reference intakes that for men and women 14 years of age and older to take in 1.5 grams of sodium daily. That way the body will be healthy. To put these amounts in proportion, one Big Mac already contains 1 gram of sodium. What if a person has too much sodium from the salt in the diet? We are not talking about the effects of an overdose. It's more what we see in Western countries, that throughout their lives, people constantly eat just a little too much salt. A lot of salt is added to our food as a flavoring or preservative, so it's not that difficult to eat too much salt. Several negative effects occur in the human body when too much sodium is ingested over long periods. The long-term effects for humans are stroke or cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, unnatural fluid retention, or kidney disease. So scientists wondered, are these effects of excessive sodium intake also found in cats? Do they suffer from the same conditions? The question of whether sodium content in food was important for the health of cats has been studied many times. It is still a subject of much debate. Until recently, the role of sodium in feline nutrition, especially high dietary levels and the associated implications for cat health and disease were unclear. Recent scientific reports have shed a new light on this debate. It is generally believed that high sodium levels are used to enhance water intake and urine volume in cats. This is important for the prevention of a common disease that cats suffer from, namely bladder stones. The question I had was do cats naturally require sodium themselves? Do they go looking for it themselves like herbivores do? Well, researchers investigated this in 1997. This research shows that out of a group of 24 kittens, there was not one that went looking for sodium itself. So with cats, there is no such thing as a sodium appetite. So what is the effect that sodium has on cats? Well, the effects are not comparable to humans. We saw earlier that humans can suffer from stroke or cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, unnatural fluid retention and kidney disease. First of all, with higher dietary sodium, cats are not going to experience higher blood pressure, so they don't experience the additional risk from higher blood pressure either. Second, studies of healthy young and old cats reported no signs of decline of kidney function or cardiac function over the medium and long term when fed high levels of sodium. Third, studies again point out that high levels of dietary sodium can also contribute to increasing the volume of urine that the animal excretes. This is important, the concentration of the urine will be lower so there is a less chance of developing bladder stones. On the other hand, studies do indicate that a too low intake of sodium can lead to problems for a cat that already has kidney problems. However, there is one big problem. You've heard me talk about high and low levels for sodium intake. 
But what is a high and low level for cats? Scientists haven't figured that out yet. They indicate that more research needs to be done on this topic. So researchers cannot say for sure how much sodium is too low or how much is too high. So what can we conclude then? It is safe to conclude that cats are not as affected as humans if they include higher levels of sodium in their diet. Research has shown that they do not experience the same negative effects on their health that humans do. Only when the sodium content is too low can it lead to bladder stones for the cat. With today's industrial production of cat food, I don't think too low of sodium in food will happen anytime soon. And while we are on the subject of food, I would like to add that it is always important to have fresh water ready for the cat to drink whenever she wants. It is also important to note that studies are conducted with healthy cats. If your cat has special food restrictions imposed by a veterinarian due to a condition, it is important to always follow these. So this is the end of the video again. Thank you for watching. Contact me on social media with comments or feedback and I see you next week.